Hi, I have welcome to Karavi. So, in this episode of our Leak Code series, we are going to solve the question name plus one. So, this is the 66th question in the Leak Code problems. There will be a link to this after watching the video. Sure, go check it out and try to solve it. So, let first read the question, try to find an algorithm to solve this question based on the given examples, and then we will go into Leak Code and program the logic. Now, let us get started by reading the question. So, you have given a large integer represented as an integer array digits, where each digits of i is the ith digit of the integer. So, we are given an integer, but these integers are not stored as an integer, rather they are stored as an array. So, for example, 10 will be stored as 1 comma 0 as an array and similarly 200 will be stored as 2 comma 0 comma 0 as an array. So, a normal integer is now stored as an integer array. So, given this as input for us, what do we have to do? The digits are ordered from the most significant to the least significant left to right. So, normal 10 means 1 comma 0. Similarly, the left to right order is preserved in our array 2. The large integer does not contain any leading zeros. So, the leading zeros mean it does not start with 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. It is not like that. If it is 100, it is always like 1, 0, 0. So, we are given an array such that the array elements does not have any leading zeros. Leading zeros means we do not have any zeros in the front of the number. Okay. Increase the large integer by 1 and return the resulting array of digits. So, we are going to manipulate this array. We are just going to add 1 to this number. You might ask me, Shiva, that's a very easy thing to do. You can just add 1 to a number very easily, right? Yeah, it's an easy question, but there are many edge cases in this question. We must always consider those edge cases when writing the algorithm. So, that becomes the tricky part of this question. It's a very simple question as given here. We are given an integer as an array. We are going to add 1 to this array. We are just add 1 to this large number and then return the array itself. That's it. So, let us move to the examples, try to understand what they have done and the logic for this question. Let us move to the examples. So, here we have a very basic input. This is our general easiest case, which is we have an input called 1, 2, 3. We are going to add 1 to this. So, what will it become? 123 plus 1 is 124. So, only the last element is being changed here. So, 3 becomes 4. This is the easiest cases of all. Okay. So, when does this occur? Let us infer from it. So, whenever our values between 0 until 8. So, if this last digit is from 0 until 8, whenever we add a 1 to it, the last element is the only element that will get affected. Right. Because 0 plus 1 is 1 and 8 plus 1 is 9. But if we include 9, 9 plus 1 becomes 10, which is a two digit number. So, here carryover occurs and hence the values only get replaced or in this case, only the last element is affected if the last element range is between 0 until 8. Okay. So, this is the easiest case. This is our first case. Let us have this in our mind. Okay. So, if the last number or the number plus 1 is less than 10, then we can just straight away add it and return the array, our solution will be done. Okay. So, this is our first case, but this is not just the only case that we have. Let us look at the other examples and find the other edge cases. So, what if our example was 129? In that case, 129 plus 1 becomes 130. So, here 2 cells get affected. So, 9 becomes 0 and 2 becomes 3. So, there is where the problem comes. So, what do we do? Whenever our value is 9, because 9 is the only case where carryover occurs, right? In all other cases, we can just add 1 to it. If it were 8, you can add 1 and make it 9. 9 is the only case in which adding a 1 to it creates a 2 digit number. In all the other cases from 0 until 8, there is no other issue. So, 
in the case of 9, what we have to do? We have to make that element as 0 and make it go again and repeat the process. Now, what would you do? Add 1 to the next element, 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, we have added, we can return. So, what do we do? Whenever 9 occurs, we make that element as 0 and repeat the process. What process? We are moving to the next element or the next place. We have started from the zeros or 1's place. We are moving on to the 10th place. So, in the 10th place, we are repeating the same process. What is that? We are adding 1 to it. So, in this case, if we are adding 1 to this, our problem gets solved because 2 plus 1 becomes 3, which is solvable. No 2 digit number is created, no carry over generated. So, our answer is 130. We can return it. Now, moving on to the last edge case, which is 999. So, in the case of 999, you have a 9. So, obviously, 9 plus 1 becomes a 2 digit number. So, you put 0 move to the tens place. Again, 9 plus 1 is 10. You make this element 0, move to the next place. You have a 9 again. You make this 0, move to the next place. But what? There is no other next place. So, in this edge case for 9, 99, 999, 9999, in all these cases, what do we have to do is, we would have to create a new array of size n plus 1. If this were of size 3, our new array must be of size 4. Only then we can accommodate the last digit that we have. So, in here, 999 plus 1 is 1000. We can accommodate the last digit 1 only if you create a new array of size n plus 1. So, that is what we are going to exactly do. And in all these cases, as you can see, the rest of the elements would be 0. Only element that gets changed is the first element, the 0th index. So, in case if it were 9, 9 plus 1 becomes 10. So, all the other elements become 0, array of 0 is 1. So, this is going to be the solution. So, this is the logic. So, we are going to start from the right to left process because addition starts from right to left. We are going to have right to left process. We are going to start from the end of the array, try to add 1 to it. If we could add 1, if the elements plus 1 were less than 9 or less than 10, if it did not bring a carry, we can just add one to it and return it. No other job to do. Okay. But if it didn't have it, then in that case, it means we have a 9 in there. We will make that element 0, move to the next place. So, move to the next iteration of it. We will repeat this process until we reach the end of the loop. So, what does it mean if we reach the end of the loop? If we come out of the loop, it means all those elements are 999. So, all elements are 9. That is only when we will come out of the loop. Else, we will increment the value and the loop would be done. We will return the value. Our answer is got. We will return it. So, if we come out of the loop, when we traversing from right to left, it means the elements are 999. So, we have to create a new array of size n plus 1 and make the array of 0 as 1 and return it. And that would be our answer. So, this is the general algorithm that we have developed. Now, let us move to lead code and try to code this logic. So, let us now start with the for loop that we saw. So, what do we use a for loop for? We have to traverse this from right to left, right? So, in order to do that, we are starting from i equal to the end of the array. So, digits dot length minus 1. So, the last index is n minus 1 because we are using 0 based indexing i greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus. So, we are going to use this for loop to start from the rightmost element, the end of the array and move left element by element until we reach the 0th index. Okay. So, that is what this for loop does. So, what do we do? 123. We will look at that case first of all. So, if our element that is digits of i plus 1. Okay. So, the digits of i plus 1 is less than 10. If we add 1 and still the element is less than 10, maximum of 9. In that case, what do we do? We add 1 to it. So, digits of i plus plus and then we can just straight away return that array. That will be our answer because the objective is to just add 1. Whenever we have added 1, we have incremented 1, we can return it because that is our answer. Our job here is done. But in case, if we didn't get the answer. 
digits plus 1 is equal to 10. In that case, what do we do? In that case, we have to make the digits of 5 equal to 0 because 9 plus 1 is 10. So, that is, uh, element becomes 0, carry over 1. How do we become carry over 1? We are not returning it. So, we are moving to the next iteration. In the next iteration, what do we do? We move the pointer from the last digit to the second last digit now. And again, we try to add 1 to it. So, this is how we implementing the carry over principle here. So, we are moving on to the next iteration. If the element is less than 1 and we are able to uh, less than 10 and we are able to add 1, we will increment it and return it. This return statement and digits of i++ plus plus, that happens only once in this for loop. Whenever it occurs, we have added 1 to it. So, we are continuing or stopping this process. Okay. So, this is the plus 1 question. Now, what if it comes out of this loop? What does that mean? If it comes out of this, as we saw, the examples are 9, 99, 999 and etc. In those kind of examples, we have to create a new array. So, uh, digits is equal to new int of n plus 1 or digits dot length plus 1. Because in all these numbers, we have just n elements, but the answer contains n, min, n plus 1 elements. 9 plus 1 is 10. 9 has only 1 element, 10 has 2 elements. So, we have to create a new array of length, digits dot length plus 1. And finally, digits of 0 is turned to 1. Okay. 9 becomes 0, 0. A new array is created, which has value 0, 0. And the first element, array of 0, is changed to 1. So, it becomes 10. And similarly, for 999, all the elements are set to 0 and only the first element, the 0th index element is changed to 1. So, it becomes 1000. So, in a similar fashion, we will get the answer for all the other numbers. So, we can just straight away return digits now. So, this is going to be our code for the plus 1 question. Now, let us run this code and verify it for all the test cases that we have. So, running this for the basic test cases, we get our output. Now, let us submit this code and check for very large numbers that are given to us as test cases in the code. Yeah, so we have successfully passed the all test cases that is given to us. So, this is the question of plus 1. So, it is a very simple question once you understand the logic out of it and you validate all the edge cases that are present here. So, that is it for this video. If you love this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing to code Ivo so you do not miss out on any future content. See you in the next episode of Code Ivo. Until then, bye bye.